Okay, so uh, questions 100 to 103. I'm sorry about my voice. Uh, I seem to be losing it with all this talking and teaching. But, um, okay, so uh, 103. So we start with um, this uh, bivalve organism. So, um, and it connects two halves and it has a muscle that closes it tight and the muscle relaxes. And a uh, little information there. Uh, a little bit too much information, so <laughs> just scanning the article, I think, is the uh, right uh, choice there. We do see that there is a part, uh, you know, where it goes up and, and, you know, we have the contraction. So the contraction goes up, something like that, and then it goes down. And then we have some AC part and then a DC part that goes up. Uh, then looks like it's gonna do something fun but then stops and then a uh, last DC part that doesn't go up quite as much Wow I think I could have drawn that better in primary school so anyway there's a there here we, we we are told there's an inhibitor over here here it's DC I don't know why they write it with small d and small c and periods because usually DC is written like that that's direct current and then um, there's a segment over here with with alternating current and then DC again here and then DC again here and um, and there's uh, some uh, 5-HT here that's clearly uh, having an inhibitory effect because the normal contraction you can just imagine this like a depolarization that you've seen for sure when you looked at neurons um, uh, and the action potential so this depolarization this contraction so it goes up and suddenly and in fact they even tell you that there's a there's a portion that is phasic um, you know and and they and they describe it as responding to stimulation with a brief contraction and then they they, they say that there's a portion um, under which is tonic uh, responding to stimulation with prolonged contraction so this is a tonic phase so clearly there's a phasic thing there's contraction depolarization and and as the muscle is is really contracted but then inhibition boom stops then uh, there's the alternating current just not successful it doesn't have the same amplitude which means not the same height and it doesn't have the same breadth it doesn't have that tonic contraction that the dc does and then another attempt at dc uh current goes just as high so the phasic part is the same tonic was just about to start but then boom had the effect of 5-ht uh so powerful powerful to inhibit it and then the next dc current doesn't go as high the amplitude is not as high and there is no prolongation and seems to be the effect of the 5-ht okay so um that gives us an idea of what that diagram is all about then um you just look at the questions and uh, question 100 says in contract sorry in contrast to the effect of the dc uh, stimulus the figure indicates that the AC stimulus enhanced the effect of 5-HT no 5-HT did this all by its lonesome 5-HT came in it did this and then it didn't just affect this one it affect that one AC occurred beforehand and then um, uh, B failed to induce a prolonged contraction. This is that tonic prolonged contraction as time is going by uh, here. So it's uh, it's clear that it, this did not. So so answer choice B is correct. And then C abolished contraction caused by DC stimulation. No, it's not AC that abolished this contraction. It was 5-HT uh, that. And it didn't abolish the contraction. It uh, reduced the tonic phase of the contraction because the phasic aspect uh, did occur. And D, reversed the ongoing effect of stimulation of the inhibitory nerve. There's no information about that. And B is clearly the uh, correct answer. So 101. Of the following, the figure indicates most clearly that 5-HT rapidly overcomes the effect of DC stimulation. So here is DC stimulation that did occur. In fact, they, they, they actually show you the little uh, stimulation areas uh, that go up down there, but you don't need that. But anyway, uh, DC stimulation occurs, but boom, it's been um, uh, overcome by the power of this inhibitory uh, effect. So answer choice A is correct. 
In fact, um, you can imagine this as being the control in the experiment. So, well, it's not a perfect control because an inhibitor, <laughs> inhibitor was added over here, but at least this part of it before the inhibitor, that's the control and that's what we would have expect here, expected here, but it didn't happen because of 5-HT. Antitrust B is DC stimulation slowly overcomes the effect of 5-HT. Well, you know, the phasic part did, but we don't see any phasic and tonic part uh, overcoming. Um, so we, we have not seen it uh, happen yet. Maybe, perhaps it will, but we haven't seen it yet. AC stimulation overcomes the effect of DC stimulation. AC stimulation is not related to the effect of DC stimulation. I mean, it, it could if the time sequence between stimulation was much less. Then you can have a situations where the muscle won't contract unless there's a higher stimulus um, in order for the muscle to contract. That's possible, but that would be really quick uh, st uh, stimulation. And then eventually what happens is that the muscle will fatigue um, because it, it has to replace all its stores of ions and so on. And then uh, finally, a D DC stimulation eventually overcomes the effect of AC stimulation. Again, they're happening at different times. This is not happening in rapid succession where a fatigue or, or something of that nature could be um, an issue. 102, consider the observation that DC stimulation produces a higher peak than AC stimulation. So we see that there's a higher peak. Um, now consider these hypotheses that attempt to explain this observation. Okay, so uh, so we see that AC, the peak, is not only not as high, but it's also not as wide as a, as a um, DC peak. So that means there's a less amplitude, um, there's, a, there's a less contraction as a result, muscle contraction as a result of uh, the uh, AC stimulation. So the first hypothesis presented is fewer muscle fibers are stimulated by AC. Well, I, you know, it's possible that fewer muscle fibers are stimulated, therefore less contraction. That's a possibility. I, I really don't know. Um, you know, in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, and of course Acer's not thinking you're thinking this, but in the back of my mind, I am... Uh, you know, I am thinking about the fact that DC current is continuous. AC current is an alternating current. It's a pulsating current. And you have to calculate the average power for AC current. And the average power will be less than the average power, uh, well, the power that's calculated for direct current. So I do know that this is less current. And so fewer muscle fibers are stimulated in the back of my mind. I think that is possible. So um, the... Next is muscle fibers stimulated by AC contract less than those stimulated by DC. Again, uh, you know, it might be that this recruits different muscle fibers and they have a different ability to contract. So, I, you know, again, this is a possibility. But um, certainly there's nothing, no information that's been presented in the passage in the diagram that can be used to contradict these options. So neither hypothesis is contradicted by the information that we have. So the correct answer for 102 would be D. 103. Which of the following uh, does the information provided uh, suggest most strongly? Okay, so 5-HT is a transmitter substance carrying a message from, so 5-HT is clearly, uh, this is an inhibitory message because it really affected, um, you know, this tonic contraction over here in the muscle fibers. So uh, that's answer choice B, because uh, it, it affected the tonic phase of the, of the thing most significantly. Because don't forget, the question is most strongly. Because yes, I, I do agree that it seems to have affected the phasic part a little bit, because the phasic part went down a bit here. But the most significant element is that the tonic part is absent here and the tonic part is absent here. And so, and this is an inhibitory influence on that contraction. And that is exactly what um, answer choice B is saying. So, 
Um, if you uh, are looking to review information about AC and DC currents, and I somehow think you you don't want to, <laughs> but uh, it's over there. And then for uh, neurons, um, it's in this section. It's really neural cells and tissues, and then uh, muscle cells, really contractile cells and tissues is in 5.2, and then uh, muscle is in 11.2.